Welcome everyone to the 2020-21 Eden Hopen District Memorial Hospital Year in Review. This is our community meeting for the year. Let me first acknowledge the traditional owners. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the waters and land on which we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, as well as the elders from other communities who may be here today. Let me welcome everyone. Welcome those in person and those virtually, including the CEOs of our neighbouring health services. Welcome. The meeting tonight will be a, um, you'll hear from our vice chairs, um, you'll hear from our CEO and the executive team talking about some of the exciting initiatives that uh, um, that's occurred throughout the year and some of the many service improvements that we've been able to provide to our community. I'd like now to introduce Andrew Saunders, our CEO, to commence our year in review of our operations. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Now, Sarah has um, kindly put together a montage video for us to um, have a little look at as uh, homage to the year in review. And uh, following that, I'll, um, I'll get on to talking about our aged care redevelopment. So if we'd like to play that, please, Jesse.
Thanks, Jesse. I think that really shows what a great connection Eden Hope District Memorial Hospital has with its community and its staff. And it's very heartwarming to see that even though we have been going through possibly the most difficult time in healthcare in recent times, um, we've managed to keep continually uh, communicating and connecting with those people that we care for. So I'm going to have a little chat about our um, Lakeside Living Redevelopment. Um, the funding for this was made possible through two sources. We received $6.3 million in regional health infrastructure funding from, made possible from the Department of Health. And without this, the bill would no, never have been possible. But we also received $2.3 million bequest from Peter Carraher, which is an extraordinary and generous donation. In recognition of this, we've named the new wing of the um, Lakeside Hostel, or Lakeside Living as we now call it, uh, the Peter Carraher wing in recognition of this um, fantastic bequest and donation. The new building, as you've seen by the video and by the pictures, is spacious and warm, with lots of common areas where residents can sit and enjoy each other's company, but also with rooms that allow for those private and personal spaces. Stage two and three of the redevelopment involved the refurbishment of what was the Lakes Hostel, and we've redeveloped that to have the same look and feel as the new Peter Carraher wing. All work has now been completed, and we are just waiting for the final certificate of occupancy. And we look forward to uh, having a community open day in the near future as COVID restrictions allow. The build quality is an absolute credit to Lots Constructions of Fortune and all of their contract partner contractor teams who can completed all of the work throughout the pandemic. A special note of thanks has to go to Darren Trotter, our project manager, who, um, whose eye for detail and industry knowledge and a common sense approach meant that the building came in well on budget. Thank you to the Project Control Group, which is the board group, for their input during the build and for providing clear governance and oversight throughout the project. And of course, a huge thank you to our staff. They've worked tirelessly throughout the entire transition, working in difficult conditions, and to make sure that the, the work in and living in the new facility has been seamless. Lakeside Living provides Eden Hope and its surrounding communities with first rate care and accommodation close to home. We're very excited to be moving our Baywing residents, our high care residents, into the new facility in the coming weeks and having all our aged care under one roof. So that's uh, a little bit about the aged care redevelopment. As you can see, we've, um, we've also opened a health and wellbeing hub, and we were very lucky with this that um, early on in the pandemic, Eden Hope was offered the opportunity by the King Craig Medical Clinic of Narracourt, who refurbished and renovated this entire building at a cost of over $400,000 and offered us the opportunity to lease the building because they couldn't come across the border and provide services in Eden Hope. What this allowed us to do was to bring all of our primary health services into the one location right in the centre of town. The subsequent success of this relocation and the opportunity in recent months to purchase the building has been welcomed and supported by the Eden Hope board, the staff of Eden Hope, especially the primary health staff, and also the community. Jesse, I think we've got a little video that we could play. Hi guys, I'm Robin. Welcome to the Health and Wellbeing Hub. Come in and I'll introduce you to the team. Here's Marnie, she's our intake and data officer and she's currently doing a border pass for a couple that need to get over to South Australia. This is one of our district nurses. I'm Jess, I'm one of the district nurses. Um, so we work out of the Health and Wellbeing Hub at 65 Elizabeth Street. Um, we see lots of different people in the community helping them to access nursing services, do advanced care planning, um, lots of other stuff. Um, we have people that come in and have room care done at the working visit people at home. Um, whatever you really need, we um, tend to focus care to individual levels. Yes, I'm cancer resource nurse. <laughs> I'm the midwife and um, yeah, I'd like to say we, um, we love working in this place and um, all having access to each other and we can sort of share information with pe people's consent very easily and easy access from the street which is really important for cancer patients, for telehealth and, and also the maternity patients as well um, because yeah, they've got access to playgrounds and the pharmacy next door and, and it's more friendly, um, I think, than walking into a hospital situation. So they really like that aspect of it as well. Yeah, uh, no, it's fantastic.
Hi, I'm Callie and I'm the post acute care coordinator in Eden Hope. So since we've been in this building, we've had lots of people pop in and say they've come home from hospital but haven't had those services organised. So it's been really good to have the front of the building in the main street. I'm Al, one of the outreach workers. I'm working in today in the hub in Eden Hope. It's the best move we've made as far as the service goes. The community can come in off the street, see the lovely Marnie out the front and make a, an appointment to see us. It's uh, non-clinical for the people to just walk in. Um, we connect to all the services. Uh, over a thousand visits we've done to the community and the community can come in and see us. It's easy. Great, great move. We've got coming in the very near future, which is telehealth for the Royal Children's Hospital. So that'll save people from travelling to Melbourne. Podiatrist who will be set up here in the treatment room. Um, and if we're lucky, we might get some um, further funding for assistance with care and housing because we have a lot of homelessness and risk of money to us. So keep our fingers crossed and see if we can go down that line. Thank you. Thanks, Tanya. I'm um, a district nurse and also the diabetes resource nurse here at Eden Hope. Um, I've worked in Eden Hope in community health for the last 10 years and the main issue I've seen with people um, not being able to access services is because they're not aware of who does what or where to access them and this hub has allowed people to have a um, access point. They come in, there's no wrong door. If we can't help them, we um, point them in the right direction. one of our community advisory committee members, Chris Simpson. And this came from Chris, he said, the community advisory committee recognised the excellent innovation to purchase the property and locate, locate the primary health staff to the health and wellbeing hub located in Elizabeth Street. The hub staff are approachable and available to all Eden Hope district colonies. It's an ongoing asset for outreach to the community of Eden Hope. This service is so, so timely during the COVID-19 pandemic and is currently a very necessary service. The administrators of our hospital are to be congratulated for making this initiative and decision happen. We believe it will be a gem in the Crown of Eden Hope Hospital long into the foreseeable future. Well done to all. That was a really nice comment from um, Chris Simpson, one of our community advisory committees and a very strong uh, proponent of the hospital who's very supportive of, of what we do here at Eden Hope. So some of the primary health services that are uh, coming out of the hub and the what we, what we provide through primary health is we have district nursing, which includes specialist diabetes and cancer resource nurse positions. We have chronic conditions and health promotion. We have a day program, which includes a new dementia specific program and a memory lane cafe for carers of people with dementia. We have social workers, health navigators, telehealth and the health direct um, coordinator. We have an occupational therapist. We have CHSP hack or home community care program for younger people and a podiatrist. We have rural health mental health program and we have an intake and data worker based in the, at, at the primary, as part of the primary health team. The health and wellbeing hub is home to the health navigator, diabetes resource nurse, cancer resource nurse, podiatrist, the occupational therapist, rural health mental health program team of three, our intake and data worker and visiting specialists using the room, including a speech pathologist, audiologist for private consults and visiting RFDS social worker. There's a lot of additional services available out of the hub, which include assistance with the online border passes and SA health exemptions for our community, advice on current border restrictions and requirements, such as COVID testing and the travel restrictions. Walk-in COVID vaccine booking uh, is available and collection and return of consent forms is done at the hub as well for our community. Service navigation, including how to access the My Age Care, HAC, PYP programs and other services, and other local providers such as Meals on Wheels domestic and domestic assistance through the Western Shire Council. Some of the highlights for Rob and her primary health team over the, over the last year have been that they've secured funding to provide OT assessments for NDIS in addition of the general OT services, securing ongoing funding for two specialist resource nurses and allocated diabetes, which have been allocated to diabetes resource nurse and the cancer resource nurse, Securing funding through the Grand Hinge Region Telehealth Project to, uh, to purchase devices and data plans for all health navigators to use in the community. Secure continued funding for the Rural Outreach Program 
to deliver non-clinical mental health support and education across the four shires of West Rimmer Shire Council, Yarri Ambiac, Horsham and Horsham Rural City Council into 2022. The Health Navigator works closely with the Grampians Region Telehealth Advisory Group to establish a strong telehealth culture with regional and metropolitan providers. August 2020 to February 2021 saw six clients using telehealth services. March 2021 to November 2021 saw 35 clients. The increase can be attributed to the greater uptake of telehealth by specialists and increased engagement within our local community. We now have five iPads, a laptop and Bluetooth mic and speakers for clients to use in their homes or at the hub. Our health navigator has been working with the Eden Hope District Memorial Hospital residential aged care staff, and in particular, the diversional therapist to engage residents in telehealth options, including wellbeing appointments with other family members and using the Health Direct portal. The Day Centre program developed and, developed and distributed hundreds of activity packs directly to consumers, developed a newspaper to keep people updated and began introducing tablets and technology to consumers to allow them connect to connect in a virtual environment. It's been a, huge primary, it's been a huge challenge for the primary health team over the last year, but they've continued to support our community and provide excellent client-centred care and service throughout the year. With no face-to-face -face programs, they have still been able to maintain services and contact with all clients. Staff have had to learn how to use the latest technology to maintain that contact and think on the run to better support those that are isolated and in need. It's been fantastic work by the primary health team. Our rural outreach team, outreach team has gone from strength to strength over the last three years. We've built a strong team that provide immediate care for those in our communities that are experiencing situational distress. The rural outreach team have worked throughout the pandemic utilising telehealth platforms to continue this vital service and with restrictions lifting are keen to get back to face-to-face -face care. With further funding to ensure this vital work continues and as part of the Mental Health Royal Commission reform, we are looking at all opportunities within the Grampians region to grow the program across our region and provide mental health care for those most in need. Thank you. Um, that's it for me on, on those on the um, primary health team and the rural outreach program. I'd like to now hand over to Joseph Bermuda, our Director of Nursing, to um, talk about the EDMH COVID response. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Joseph. Thank you. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way EDMH delivers care to our customers, our residents, and the wider community as a whole. It has made us think outside the box when it comes to the de delivery of care and services. Some changes that we've adapted to include are the following. An increase in the use of telehealth services, in particular specialist appointments, such as geriatrician review and the use of my emergency doctor. Conversion of a part of our acute ward into a COVID-19 ward. Adapting and creating policies and procedures to manage potential COVID-19 outbreaks. Working closely with our regional partners to ensure that we have a planned COVID-19 response. Increase the number of hours allocated to our leisure and lifestyle team. The use of virtual reality to keep our elderly patients engaged with activities. These are just some of the ways that we've adjusted as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Moreover, we have been able to achieve a lot of success in the COVID-19 space, and this include the vaccination clinic, the, com the completion of multiple vaccination clinics. To date, we have about 96.90% of our staff vaccinated against COVID-19. Of this, 47.29% have had their first dose, and 49.61% are fully vaccinated. We have also delivered 645 vaccinations to the community. COVID-19 testing. The creation and maintaining of a COVID-19 testing clinic, our staff have adapted amazingly to this new part of the daily routine. Booking tests, arranging the logistics of how and where we carry out tests, and completing swabs for our community members. An influx of this test due to the South Australian border restrictions has, has led to approximately 550 tests being conducted in the last 90 days. Amazing numbers for our staff who are also busy looking after consumers in the ward and outpatients. Next one is the visitor restrictions. Now the COVID-19 pandemic also meant that we had to make constant changes around visiting rules for both our acute care and aged care services. 
I want to personally thank uh, the residents, their family, and the staff for being understanding and proactive during these times and for helping to keep everyone safe. Next one is the original response that we've done. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted how, we, how well we are able to respond as a region. It showed that we are better together when we conduct a collective approach. It makes us closer with each other and help us to feel less alone in these trying times. We can rely on each other for communication and support when needed. I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of our staff members who have continued to work tirelessly during this pandemic. Thank you. Now, I, I would like to introduce Deborah Taylor, our quality and risk coordinator. She will be discussing about the acute accreditation that we've had. Read all about it. Eden Hope and District Memorial Hospital meets all national standards, providing exceptional services in the acute and urgent care departments. Accreditation every day. We all feel extremely proud. We want to shout it from the rooftops and broadcast our triumphs out loud. Our assessment was delayed in 2020, but the pandemic gave us a year's grace to thoroughly check every action and work at an unhurried pace. We checked all facets of care, our cleaning, our nursing, our food, our laundry, our administration. Every aspect of care was pursued. Many months of meetings and planning, our teams worked as one for the goal to meet all the national standards. We worked tirelessly as a whole. On the morning of September the 7th, 2021, with apprehension and anticipation, the accreditation visit began against eight national standards with 148 criteria in all. How would we go? Would we have any not mets in a health service remote and so small? The two days, although tiring, were amazing. Have I mentioned all standards were met? I'm sorry if I am repeating. It still hasn't quite sunk in yet. It was a hybrid assessment, which is not the usual way. Those unpredictable restrictions ensured only one surveyor could stay. One of the assessors travelled to Eden Hope. He was a CEO of a health service near Sale. His team leader, a registered nurse was confined, confined to New South Wales. We met and provided tours using Zoom. The internet and our people all coped. Not a hiccup, no failing technology. It all went better than hoped. Once one concern was that we'd have no hospital patients, but we were actually caring for four. The assessors heard praise from the family of one, which was wonderful and hard to ignore. They observed our staff, they talked to patients and community members as well. We are lucky and thankful to those who have helped us. Your contributions were swell. With exceptional employees, volunteers and leaders, we were never going to fail. And I'd personally like to thank you all. And now I can exhale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one there, that's fantastic. <laughs> I'd like to introduce AJ Verma, and he will be acknowledging uh, as a board member, and he will be acknowledging our team members. Thank you, Deb. Thanks very much for that. And congratulations to the team on a wonderful achievement with accreditation and also a wonderful achievement with that piece of poetry. Well done. <laughs> it's my great pleasure representing the board of directors to acknowledge the team members who've reached important milestones in their service at EDMH during the 2020-21 financial year. Now, these staff members will receive their service awards at the EDMH staff awards lunch. I think it's a good time to reflect on all the work that everyone's done in the health service to provide safe care under trying circumstances. 
In terms of the staff service awards, we'd particularly like to acknowledge Therese Burgess, who's reached 35 years of service at EDMH. She began her journey at EDMH in 1986 as a registered nurse and served many, many hours at the hospital, particularly across the challenging and demanding night shift duties. Now, in 2019, Therese also celebrated the milestone of 50 years. So I'll let, I'll let that sink in. 50 years since she graduated as a nurse. Well done, Therese, on your 35 year award. It's well deserved and thank you for your service. The board would also like to acknowledge the following staff. You might recognize this young man on the screen here. Andrew Saunders, 30 years of service. Andrew joined EDMH in 1990 as a cook, stepping up to the position of general services manager in 2004. And he became the CEO in 2019, I think, it's a great testament to not only the talent we have in Edenhope, but also the culture that nurtures and promulgates this. And Andrew, since being CEO and always during his time here, has championed that. Speaking of 30 years of service, I'd like to acknowledge Estelle Michener on behalf of the board also. Estelle was a vital member of EDMH's day center team as a day center assistant until she retired, well-deserved, in 2021. Margaret Kelly, has also served for two decades after commencing in 2000 as a um, personal care worker in the Lakes Hostel. So well done, Margaret. Naomi Grigg has also served for 20 years or two decades, and she left EDMH in 2020 after 20 years of service as a district nurse. Callie Howard has served for 15 years, as, starting off as a registered nurse, before eventually joining the district nursing team. And now, as you've seen in the previous video, working as a post-acute care coordinator. Thank you, Hal Kelly. Lara Rogers has served for 10 years as a personal care worker in the Lakes Hostel. And Danielle Bull has also served 10 years as a registered nurse across the acute ward, the medical clinic and the district nursing service. The board of directors would like to acknowledge and thank all these staff members for their valuable service at ADMH over a prolonged and more recently challenging time. So thank you all. Now, in terms of welcomes and farewells, we always welcome new staff members and unfortunately say goodbye to some much loved members of the community. The board of directors would like to acknowledge 27 employees who joined EDMH during the last financial year up until now, and also farewell the 36 who have moved on. Of these 36, I'd like to particularly acknowledge Daryl Atchison, our nurse unit manager of the Cowery Nursing Home, and also Debbie McLeish, the numb of the Lakes Hostel, who left EDMH in 2021 with many years of service in between. Both Daryl and Debbie were known as advocates for the staff and the residents in their respective facilities, and both played huge parts in the changeover process from the current facilities to the soon to be opened Lakeside Living Facilities. EDMH also acknowledges the employees of the month who've gone above and beyond their job description as have all employees since the beginning of the 2021 financial year till now. So July, 2020, Demi McLeish for her strong leadership, compassion and a promotion of a fair work culture after stepping up as nurse unit manager of the Lakes Hostel. August, 2020, the leisure and lifestyle team for their work during COVID-19 to ensure that residents have something to look forward to every day. Thank you. September 2020, Sahil Ami, for his work as ANUM in the Kauri Nursing Home and for also stepping up as an active coordinator during challenging times. October 2020, well done to Colleen Hosking for the difference she makes in the hostel by playing the guitar for residents and making their day entertaining. December 2020, the hotel services team for their excellent teamwork hardworking attitude during a very, very challenging period of COVID-19. February 2021, the Rural Outreach Team, we've seen them on the video before, and they've done amazing work across the region, assisting people who struggle with both their health, physically and mentally. March 2021, Anna McDonald, well done for stepping up as a leader in the kitchen in early 2021, exhibiting outstanding communication skills and a kind and proactive attitude. April 2021, Trisha McInnes has been here before. And thank you again, Trish, for your hard work coordinating the COVID-19 vaccination program 
which Joseph said has been a huge success and for administering the vaccine to staff and community members alike. July 2021, Annie Church and Marnie Baker with their joint efforts and dedication to ensuring the success of the administrative side of the COVID-19 vaccination clinics and the improvements they made to their system, often not seen, but always appreciated. Thank you, Annie and Marnie. Mm -hmm. August 2021, the most recent award goes to Liz Smith for her helpfulness and her willingness to go above what's required, going all out for consumers and going out of her way to provide excellent care to them. Thank you, Liz, and thank you. Congratulations to all winners of the Employee of the Month Awards. Much deserved. Now, we've spoken about staff wellbeing and celebrations, and EDMH has held many events throughout the 2020-21 financial year in order to support our brilliant hardworking and dedicated employees through what's been undoubtedly a challenging time across this system, but particularly in healthcare. And the events have included staff appreciation days with barbecue lunches, hamburger days, staff breakfast, the acute accreditation celebration, well-deserved, and also fun events like the Footy Colours Day. EDMH has also provided all staff with gratitude bags filled with useful gifts to thank them for their amazing work during COVID-19 and I would also, on behalf of the board of directors and my colleagues, like to thank all of you for coming here today and congratulate everyone here I've just mentioned on a job well done. Congratulations. I'll now hand over to my colleague and co-vice chair, Avril Hogan. Thank you. EDMH is many things to many people within the community. I'm gonna be discussing the strategic plan. The strategic plan, the purpose of it is to have a multi-year plan that allows everybody working across the organization to make the small daily decisions that all work together towards achieving the long-term operational goals. As we look at these, we always reference our services and the services as Andrew has spoken about, our urgent care, hospital and specialized medical services. There is a residential aged care, independent accommodation, the health and well-being hub, community services and health promotions. Within the strategic plan, we also have our vision and our values. Our vision is a healthy, thriving and connected community. And our values are guiding and guiding principles is that we're led by these four principles up on the screen. The first is excellence. The second is respect. The third is transparency and integrity. And the fourth is accountability. These are the values that the board regularly brings up within our board meetings as we discuss potential strategies and any organizational difficulties that we need to discuss. So as we were doing the discussions about the potential voluntary amalgamation, we, all, we went back to reference um, the parts of the strategic plan. So the first one is the heart of the community. The heart of the community is better described as building strong relationships with local people so we can design a responsive service that's the backbone of a healthy and thriving community. Andrew's spoken about this because one great example for it this year is the health and well-being hub. The second is exceptional care, delivering outstanding health services that put people at the center of their care. The third one is a strong and empowered workforce because we are more than just a building. We need the workforce and everybody involved in the organization to be at their best and provide the best possible care. And the fourth is to be better together because we know, especially being smaller and more geographically isolated, that achieve, we can achieve more together than we could alone. And that's really through the right partnerships and collaborations. So as we go into those, we've already discussed the community hub and that was a fantastic video to demonstrate to people who haven't had the experience in it to see what is offered. There's the community care coordinator positions that facilitate community members with appointments in their own homes. We had the really great pleasure of being part of the community consultation this year, which involves 350 community contacts discussing the potential amalgamation, but there was a number of great learnings that came out of that really thorough community consultation. We've spoken about the rural outreach workers who assist with mental health issues in the community. 
And as you know, one of our great joys for this year was the residents who've now moved into the new building. Now, as we go to exceptional care, um, I'm not sure if all of you are aware, but we've brought in RIPEN nurses, which is rural and isolated practical registered nurses. It's a model of care that's been rolled out, enabling RIPEN nurses to complete clinical assessments and carry out independent intervention detailed in their own practice guidelines. And this is a support when we don't always have doctors available or we need backup within the hospital. We have regular nursing checks completed by the district nursing employees and the community health team. As you're all aware, I'm sure that over time we have had difficulty filling doctor positions. And this is one benefit that we hope to get from the possible voluntary amalgamation that will give us access to more doctors and the ability to transition patients more easily between the campuses. So if you have to go for more significant treatment surgeries, um, there will be the opportunity to transition back closer to home in a shorter amount of time. The third one is a strong and empowered workforce. We're so lucky to have the employees that we have, and we're often hiring to expand the breadth of positions that we currently have, as mentioned with doctors. With this voluntary amalgamation, we're hoping that the staff will see the benefits to expand their skill sets. They'll have more people to work with and the ability to learn from a range of health practitioners throughout the larger group. And it will provide career progression options available to staff through the larger group. And fourth, better together. We've built a multitude of partnerships across the region um, and they've really allowed us to expand um, the services, provide, for example, x-ray, financial service support, HR, IT, payroll, infection control, dietitians, and speech pathology. Some of these partnerships are time-based and some of them don't allow us to guarantee that these services will be available for the next 20 years. So we hope that with this voluntary amalgamation, we'll be able to continue to draw on a larger breadth of services over time. Our role as the board is to ensure that we're providing exceptional care today and that we're positioned as an organization to be able to provide it in five, 10 and 20 years. And in all of our discussions, we do talk about these long-term goals and how they tie back to our strategic plan. Each organization that's been involved in these discussions has their own reasons to amalgamate. And our key concern that we took into account is being able to have consistent medical care for the community. The boards of Eden Hope, Stall, Horsham, Dimboola and Ballarat are united to deliver better health outcomes for our communities. Here in rural and regional Victoria, we deserve safe health care that works with and is tailored to our community and supports the changing face of our workforce. We're all different in scale and service offering, yet we have urgent and pressing challenges. We know there are better ways of delivering care for our region and we can do it better together. There are opportunities to deliver better health care, enhance services and advance careers closer to home including improving the quality and utilisation of services with safer practices and better systems, greater opportunities for recruiting, developing and retaining health workforces, and better use of time and resource. Fostering community trust and engagement in each local health service with a stronger and more influential voice for rural health care in our region. More specifically, for Eden Hope, we want better use of the acute facility and acuity for staff and support for the aged care facility. Stall will see better access to services for local people, greater support for our workforce and better use of space. The opportunities to have greater support across specialist and medical workforces and better access to services for the people of Horsham and Dimboola, with support for the Grampians as a sub-region. Ballarat get the opportunity to support healthcare at a local level with safe and quality service lessening demand on the Ballarat Health Service and utilising the expertise and accessibility of workforce. We need to change. 
healthcare is evolving and we deserve health outcomes equal to our city counterparts. We will drive the commitments and assurances for all our communities. So what can you do? You can be a positive part of this change. We can all be leaders for a brighter future. Support, encourage and champion your health service to succeed. Initially, we will ensure high quality care in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic and to support our dedicated staff. Healthier, stronger, together. And that video summarizes it, but the why of the proposal to voluntarily amalgamate is that our communities deserve safe, sustainable healthcare tailored to their changing workforce and community needs for the long term. Together, we can provide better healthcare, enhanced services, and advance careers closer to home and now into the future. We're committed to high quality care, no loss of services, no reductions in staffing levels. The fundraising will be tied to the community and local representation will be maintained. Thank you, and I'll pass it back to Philip. Thank you, Avril. <clears throat> I'd like to firstly introduce the, uh, the board. Um, might take a minute for, the, uh, for that slide to come up. No, that slide's not coming up. Oh, yeah, here it is coming up. We went, we went out of sequence a little bit, so please bear with us. <laughs> so the board for 2020-21, as you can see on the screen, um, a very diverse mix of, um, of board directors with a great skill mix. We've worked very well together We've had some robust discussions and we've had some hard decisions to make. With all those virtual meetings, um, because we've got some board members that uh, live in Melbourne, one in Adelaide, and a number of, um, of local board members. So we've had this mix of some on site, some virtual, which, is, uh, which has given us a challenge. Throughout the, uh, the year, we've, uh, we've farewelled um, one board member, um, Annie Osborne. Annie um, was a board member since 2015. Prior to her time on the board, Annie worked at the Lakes Hostel as a personal care worker. Due to her excellent leadership skills, she was promoted to the role of team leader in of the Lakes Hostel and was well respected of, by her colleagues. Annie sat on numerous board committees, including the Clinical Governance Committee, Quality and Safety Committee, Medication Advisory Committee, Community Advisory Committee, Building Committee, and Project Control Group. Annie also represented the board at many local events, meetings, and functions, and been an active member of the community throughout the year with positions on Sing Australia as their president, the Eden Hope Bowls Club, um, and also the um, Probus and the Ladies Auxiliary, just to name a few. And he's always been a great advocate for the hospital and these groups and a local knowledge and connection um, has provided excellent knowledge um, and advice to the board. Um, Annie, we thank you for your contribution um, to the board. We also welcome two board members during the year. The first of those was Julie West. Julie is a second generation certified practicing accountant currently a partner at West Curry Consultants in Eden Hope and also in Mill. Julie's been an active uh, community member involved in the um, um, Eden Hope and Apsley Football Club, Henley on the Lake Wallace Committee and Vision and Voice of Eden Hope Committee. In the first year on the board, um, Julie sat on the, uh, and chaired the project control group and sits on the finance committee. The other board member we um, 
um, we welcome this year was uh, Harry Ostendorf. He's a, he's a business owner in the uh, Eden Hope community, has held many senior positions of leadership over the years, both here and in the interstate. Involved with the uh, Lions Club as their president and also the chair of the Eden Hope and District Financial Services. We might know that as Bendigo Bank. Volunteer at the hospital and holds positions um, on, the community, on the community committees of the Red Tail Art, Art Gallery as well. In his first year of board tenure, Harry sat as a chair of the Community Advisory Committee. And we thank both uh, Julie and Harry for their work over the year. But I'd also like to thank the other board subcommittee chairs. You know, um, Dr. Abby Verma, who uh, chairs our Clinical Governance Committee. Laura Willows, that um, chairs our Audit Risk and Compliance. Harry, that uh, um, chairs our Community Advisory Committee. Um, Julie, who, who chairs our, our Project Control Committee. And also um, Avril Hogan, um, who chairs our Finance Committee. I'd like to also thank all the volunteers that have helped and assisted our, our organisation over the past 12 months. You know, without the volunteers, you know, a lot of these community events that we've held um, would, wouldn't happen. You know, volunteers on our uh, Ladies Auxiliary um, Committee and, uh, and, and other um, committees such as the, the, the Murray Des Moines, which raises you know, great lots of, of, uh, of money for the, uh, for the Eden Haven District Memorial Hospital. So I really thank those volunteers um, for their work and support over the last uh, 12 months. I'd like to move on to, uh, to, a, to a great pleasure that, I, um, that I'm going to, to, uh, to have, and that is to have um, and, and present Life Governor Awards to, to a number of, uh, of past and, and, and one present board member. So if you just uh, allow me. The, uh, the first person that I would like to um, um, ask to come up to, um, to receive their Life Governor, um, Life Governorship Award is, is Tony Keeley. Tony was the board... Tony was the board chair from 2016 to 2019. Tony was on the board for many, many years. He had a number of highlights um, during those, those periods of time on the board. And one of those includes the aged care redevelopment program of, of $11 million. You know, the building of the staff accommodation and doctor's residence and the building of the, of the uh, medical clinic, the upgrade to the uh, Pacala Flats. But Tony could always be relied on for his community connections and sensible and, and practical solutions to complex problems. Tony was a great asset to the, to the board and uh, you know, it gives me great pleasure in presenting this to you, Tony, this uh, Life Governor badge to you. So thank you. And um, you know, we, we're very honoured to, uh, to have you as a Life Governor of Eden Haven Memorial District Hospital as your father is as well. So congratulations, Tony. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, this is a total shock. Uh, I am lost for words. Uh, I would just like to say that many of you know I was reluctant to join the board when I, I did. I loved every moment. I hardly missed uh, a meeting. It's a great place. I grew enormously as a person. I'm a much better person for it. I've seen uh, this place grow enormously. There, I've come to appreciate uh, the wonderful work so many staff do, both within the hospital and around. And as you know, I guess, uh, well, my mother came here as a nurse. Uh, my bad dad spent his final years here. Uh, I was born here, one of six. 
Uh, our own four children were born here. Uh, it's just so vital. We saw up there tonight 125 uh, people employed here, how vital it is to our community. And um, I'd just like to congratulate all the board and all the staff for what they do for their care. When, when Dad was here, it was just fantastic for him. We never ex expected him to embrace it. He loved it and the staff go over and beyond. I just want to thank everybody uh, that, that's, that's here tonight and um, I'm totally shocked and um, was totally surprised by this, never expecting it. And um, I wish you all well in the future. Thank Thanks. you. The, uh, the second award I'd like to present tonight is to uh, to to, uh, uh, to Catherine Horsler, Kate as we call call her. Kate was on the board from 2009 to 2018. Kate continues to play a very active role within the hospital and the community, and has been a strong advocate for her community. Kate um, sat on the audit and compliance um, committee and actually chaired that committee. Um, sat on the building committee and also the Safety and Quality Committee. Kate was known for crossing her T's and dotting her I's. The board could be confident that Kate had gone through all the information with a very, very sharp eye. So look, Kate, I thank you for all your years of service and uh, I'm sure that you'll continue to uh, advocate for our, our health service. So congratulations to you. Also, just a, just a okay, thank you. Oh, what can I say? I never expected this. I thought I was just coming in to see the board people. <laughs> um, anything I ever did for this hospital, I did with my heart and soul, as you would know. And um, couldn't have done it perhaps without Kerry backing me up. But it was a, a huge learning curve for me being on the board and I have so much pride in what we achieved and we did it together. We had, we had some challenging times as you always do on a board. And probably one of the nicest things I saw was to see Andrew appointed as our CEO. After coming up through the ranks, I probably shed a tear over him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I just feel so honoured to be given this. And yes, I do love our community and I just love this hospital. Congratulations, Kate. Well done, Kate. Thank you. Next Life Governor Award that I'd like to present tonight is to Christine McCann. Chris, Chris is a current board member, has been on the board, board since 2014. Chris has shown her strong passion and commitment to the organisation and a very active involvement with, the, with many, many committees. Um, Chair of the Audit, Audit, Audit and Compliance Committee on the building committee, quality and risk, clinical governance. And Chris has been a very reliable board member who regularly represented the board of community and staff functions. She's played a vital role in the community through the consultations as part of the Strengthening Partnership and Care for Our Region project. Chris always extremely thorough when reading through policies and procedures. <laughs> so Chris, congratulations. Yay. To you. <laughs> Fabs and uh, just a small bit of fail. So, congratulations, Chris. I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to the board. I couldn't have done it without the, the people that are on the board at the moment and in the past. And I just hope that everything goes well in the future. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'd like to hand uh, back out to, uh, to Andrew Saunders to uh, talk about the next steps for, uh, for our health service. Thanks, Philip. Um, yes, we never stop and we never sit on our laurels for too long. So we do have some next steps. And, and, and while we wait for the announcement around the uh, amalgamation and, and approval from the minister, which I'm sure will come, we still have all the work ahead of us that we need to do to ensure that this will be a success. I've been working in health, I've been at Eden Hope for 30 years, but I've actually worked in health since 1983. And I see that this opportunity for us to reimagine and redesign the way we deliver healthcare across our region as an absolute privilege. 
and one that with our staff support and, and commitment and with our community's input and involvement, I know will be a huge success. As I said, nothing stops and we have uh, further exciting building works and, and infrastructure works ahead for 2022 at Eden Hope and District Memorial Hospital. We've been fortunate to, to receive uh, two rounds of rural health infrastructure funding, just as we did for the, um, for the uh, re redesign and refurbishment of our Lakes Hostel and, and the building of the new aged care facility. We, we've accessed more funds through that same program. So we have $817,000 to refurbish the Bay Wing into a new urgent care centre and administration building. This project will see a purpose-built urgent care centre with direct ambulance access into it and a new main entry to the, uh, to the hospital off the highway, which will be really good. Uh, and, and this will also in, include um, upgraded, improved administration areas for staff. We currently have staff dotted all over the organisation in very varied and, and different types of offices. So it'll be fantastic to have everyone in one building. We also received $440,000 to upgrade our IT infrastructure and develop a re disaster recovery site for our information and technology systems. As we may remember with the cybersecurity attack on Barwon Health recently, we want to make sure that we're ready for any such event locally. And we're doing this with the support and guidance from Women Healthcare Group who manage our IT systems. So we're already working together closely on many, many projects. It's important for our community to know that we're continually looking for opportunities to improve, modernise and progress our health service, which has enabled us to provide the best care close to home as possible. Just hand back to Philip for the final and the close. Thank you, Andrew. Look, thank you everyone for your attendance tonight, both uh, in person and virtually. Um, really appreciate it. I hope that, uh, that you've gained something out of our community meeting. Um, the things that we've been doing throughout the year, the things that we are going to do in the future. We're looking forward to the future. And I thank the board for their commitment, their strong commitment to, uh, to this organisation. The robust uh, discussions that we have at the board level the skill mix that we have in the board provides this uh, health service you know, with a really strong um, foot to go forward. And I look forward to the future for this health service. I thank the staff. I thank Andrew and the executive team for their strong and committed leadership throughout this organisation. And of course, I thank all the team members um, that come in every day to give the best care to our community. And I thank you tonight for, um, from the board for your commitment and support. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for, for coming on and um, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.